Good morning, I'm Lynn and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. Today we're going to go have a look and see what's happening out in the barley field. Okay, so we're going to see if uh, the head is working because it got a little bit bent and I, I guess we might have to pay to get that fixed if it's broken. But as long as it works, that's the main thing. And this is their brand new combine. She's a big girl. Hey. So as he cuts that, it's going to thrash the barley off. And behind it, that's our bedding for the year. Nice golden straw. Scott thinks he's going to take over for me with the YouTube business. Competition in the neighborhood. Nice straw? How is it? That's nice straw. Yeah, it looks nice color too, yeah. eh? Nice and soft. So this is why you like straw from cereal grains because it makes this beautiful yellow bedding. So when you roll it out for the sheep, it's like a golden yellow color. And it's we've been using hay because we didn't have any straw. And uh, hay is a good substitute if you can't get straw. But this is it's it's thicker, but it's also softer. So it's a much uh, cozier, warmer bedding for the animals. So that'll be really nice. And he's stopping, which usually isn't a good sign. We're hoping everything's okay, because he did bang the head, which was a bad mistake. What are you looking for? Oh, just looking to see if there's any uh, kernels on the ground. Sometimes a little bit of light grain will blow in the back of the combine. That's probably the best place for it is back in the ground if it's light, but it looks pretty good to me. So. Oh, yeah. That's a nice straw. Much nicer than a wheat straw, but barley is so unpredictable sometimes. It's either feast or famine with barley. Yeah, that's what we've found. But this year it's been a really good year for it, right? Yeah. Yeah, got it in good shape and anyway it really won. So. Did you find a home for yours? Uh, Your straw? Yeah. There was a little good chop back in the ground with that. Sure. So barley is a good crop for us because we get the seeds off it for feeding the sheep and the rest of it gets sold off if there's any excess and the straw we use for bedding. So we, when we plant barley, we try to get a variety that has uh, a longer stem on it. Some farmers don't want the straw. It's a waste product and they have no use for it. And sometimes it's a hard sell on the market. So they'll buy varieties with a shorter stock. And like Scott was saying earlier, when he was talking about the straw, um, Barley can be a hit and miss crop. Um, we've planted it a few years where we got practically no straw off it because of the drought conditions. Um, when the drought set in, those stalks don't uh, grow nice and thick the way these ones did. These ones look extremely nice. You can see how thick they are compared to my finger. Those are and they're kind of hot they're hollow so it keeps the it make it's it's more um insulating it keeps the heat more so but because droughts are becoming more commonplace um what we're gonna do this year is we're gonna try planting what's called winter barley for the first time um, because we had 
two fields that we couldn't plant this year because of too much water, if you recall. And since that, those fields have laid dormant all summer, in September we are going to uh, work them up and plant some barley that is designed to overwinter. And that way you don't have to plant it in the spring. And the purpose of the winter crops, like winter barley, winter wheat, um, is that they get, they're already in the ground and starting to grow by the time most people are planting their spring crops. So as a result, you're harvesting it just as droughts normally start to come in because I mean, even if it's not a drought year, Augusts tend to be a dry month, and that's when your crops can suffer. But the way the environment and the weather's been going, um, that dry period is creeping up sooner, and it's lasting longer than it used to. So the theory with the winter crops is that they get all that snow and spring rains and stuff, and they get really well established and hopefully do better as long as they don't get a winter kill on them. So we're going to try that, see how that works. I think a lot of people are doing the overwintering crops these days for the same reason, because droughts can be devastating. And I think, uh, who knows, maybe in the future um, everything will be reversed. Maybe all the uh, crops will be planted in the fall and harvested uh, earlier in the summer instead of um, planting in the spring and harvesting in the fall. We'll see, it'll be interesting, but uh, you have to adapt to the climate. And uh, I don't see it getting any less hot or less dry. So he's combining that back there and he's combining really slow. Hopefully it's not because the combine's damaged. But I think they have to go fairly slow so it gives the combine time to thrash the barley and it doesn't, if you're going too fast, I'm guessing that it goes flying through and you're gonna lose a lot of those seeds because that's what you're getting paid for, the barley seeds. That's where the money is and that's where the food is. Straw is just a waste product. It's just the stalks. But it's a fantastic uh, thing to have if you have animals. Because to buy straw bales for bedding is very expensive. Um, they go anywhere from $50 to $100 a bit round bale. Same, as, same price as hay. And hay is something that you're feeding an animal so you'd think that straw would be less, but they charge as much for straw as they do for hay. And this is what the barley looks like before it's cut. So you can see the thick yellow stalks that are hollow. Nice and, that makes them nice and soft, holds uh, heat and it absorbs moisture better for bedding. And you can see uh, how the heads on the barley have all bent over like that. And each one of those things there under the beard is where it is the barley seeds. So you can see how long that is, and it's four-sided. There you can see it, and if I twirl it around. So you get quite a lot of barley off of one head, and those little bristles at the end are called beards. And there I just peeled the beards off and took the seeds off the head and you can see them all. That's barley. Very nutritious for humans and sheep alike.
Okay, here he comes. That machine's so big it almost doesn't fit in the camera. Some of these combines cost as much as a house used to cost a few years ago. They're such expensive machines. And when he gets full, Arnie has to go buy them with the grain bin and offload it into the wagon. And it looks like it's filling up. I think that's the grain up on top there you can see. Arnie's over here getting the bins. He's gonna drive out when he's not. Uh, yeah, see, right now he's pulled the spout out because Arnie will drive under that spout and gather that grain up. yesterday when we were planting it and coming out and checking to see if it had sprouted and now the grains already coming off
offload it. So now we're in the yard. This is the auger Scott was setting up. Just barely got her up there. And now from the wagon, it'll drop into here and it'll start to fill our bin up for the year's worth of food. that they're gonna call it a night because they're sitting there chatting either that or something went wrong but we're gonna assume the best it's so golden yellow out here it is a beautiful beautiful color and it looks like we got some nice straw for this winter I love the yellow color of straw. It's farmer's gold. See how big those machines are? I'm standing underneath the pit and it's way higher than me. Looks good, doesn't it? All the cracks in there. That's how dry we are here. Like that is rock and deep, deep cracks. You don't see it with the barley there, but that shows you. That's why the beans will struggle because um, there's no moisture whatsoever. But we didn't spray these fields, the, the barley, remember we were debating it and we decided not to. And look at it, those, those little green things are dandelions, but they're nothing. They don't get in the way of anything and they're actually a healthy weed, but uh, not a weed in there. And that's what happens when you work your fields really well beforehand. Um, it gets rid of the weeds and you don't have to spray poison. I 
I guess we're going to call this a day. Um, we're going to continue this tomorrow morning. So please stay tuned tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. And I think we're going to be going for a ride in a combine. Bye for now.